video is brought to you by scdkey.com and their amazing Black Friday sale. If you love PC gaming but hate paying full price for AAA games, SCD Keys has you covered. They offer discounts on digital licenses for the latest video games, software, and don't forget the cheapest Windows 10 Pro licenses around. I build and sell a lot of PCs and I've come to rely on their services for Windows keys and Office keys. Use promo code TimmyJoe12% at checkout to save even more. Links as always are in the description. People, my name is the Timmy of Joe. I come here to bring you CPUs from the past. Phenom, or Phenom, as I like to call it. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, first generation, this is actually a Phenom 2. Uh, but uh, they got the first gen in here, and I've never really played with one too much. I think at the time I had an Athlon X2 dual core. So uh, this is from 10 years ago, 2008. A platform that I'm wondering, is it still relevant? Because I believe that the Phenom 2 or Phenom or I don't know how you say it, uh, quad cores are actually pretty relevant today, but that's a little bit different of a platform, isn't it? Um, this here, uh, no bueno. We'll, we'll get to it. Anyways, so yeah, I'm running Cinebench, I believe. There we go. Told ya. And uh, yeah, we got it running here and it's going to take a little bit. It's been running for a little while. Yeah. Spoiler alert, not, not too good. But uh, yeah, uh, base clock of 2.6 gigahertz, quad core, and uh, yeah, you can overclock them. Black edition, right? Black edition. Uh, so where does it go? Unlock multiplier and what have you? Three gigahertz. It only goes up to three gigahertz from 2.6. You get a 400 megahertz overclock. And it doesn't, doesn't make things much better, does it? With 125 watt TDP as well. Oh man. So yeah, I started off with this thing. Uh, this is what I actually got with this. I made a trade and I was really looking for more of the video card that was attached. It was like a, a 77 or a, a GTX 770. And uh, there was this thing on there, this weird, I think it's an OCZ cooler. It's, it, it's sharp. I don't even really want to be touching it, but look at it. The little dot on there uh, tells me that this thing was not securely grappling the CPU. And I even took these brackets off and tried to make them, uh, you know, attach better. Uh, but it was getting to like 71 degrees and then throttling. Apparently there's like a top end of temperature for this of like 65 to 70 watts. So, oh, wow, we're done. 263. So I ended up putting like a crazy giant scythe cooler on there that only gets this thing at its max overclock to 52 degrees. So... Yeah, we, we fixed that. It also came with this crazy OCZ memory that's like got, uh, and yeah, I only had three of them on there and then another SLI OCZ memory kit or something. Uh, they must be close because I can overclock them all the same and it would boot up the same, but they have this little heat pipe. I don't think they get hot enough, like maybe in a case. I know DDR2 can get hot enough to require some extreme cooling, but I think that was just more of a gimmick. But uh, we got around the test bench here with uh, an RX 580, which should be more than enough to max this old girl out and we'll be uh, doing some gaming benchmarks and what have you. I was wondering, is this still a viable platform? Because it's comparative to the uh, Q6600, Core 2 Quad uh, came out around the same time and I still consider that something you can put a budget GPU on and overclock a little bit and you know, just you're just BCLK over or whatever. Uh, you're, you're just overclocking the, 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 um, the North Bridge or whatever. Oh God, I'm a good computer reviewer guy. The light switch. <laughs> Just base clock overclock a core two quad. And you you know, there are extremes that with it unlock multipliers and stuff, but you can usually get them to well over three gigahertz and about a cinematic score of like 320 to 350. So this thing is definitely outclassed by its Intel brethren from the time. So let's move on. I've got some information as always, some slides for you all to check out. This is, uh, you know, kind of where it places in the lineup. We see Opterons, we see, uh, you know, Athlons, we see Semprons and Turions. And then uh, the Phenom X4 came out, actually, if we move over, in uh, March of 2008. The Agena codename at a 65 nanometer architecture. Would you believe that? We're at almost 7, we're at 12 though. So in 10 years, things have come pretty far. Uh, but yeah, there was a triple core as well that was just basically one of these with one of the cores turned off because it didn't bench well or uh, whatever, bin well. So uh, yeah, this would be like the most high-end CPU from the time and not, not that great, especially considering Q6600 was just like a business processor and 
You know, uh, it, it did much better. So uh, I checked out overclocking. Here's a Phenom overclocking guide for the uh, 9950 that I have. Okay, first gen Phenom. I believe, you know, I believe that is one of the first ones. It's the lower TDP one. There's actually a 145 watt one as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, it seems like most top out around three gigahertz and the limit is by CP design. You'll never get to 3.5. So doesn't matter, you know, I, I could have a better motherboard, that's for sure. This motherboard doesn't even have any VRM cooling. I was using a little fan on it just to make sure it didn't get too toasty because I did see some throttling, uh, you know, when I didn't have that fan on there and gaming and stuff. Uh, but yeah, three, three gigahertz is not good. Boom, especially considering it's next gen will go well over four gigahertz, so overclocked. So yeah, it's got uh, level one, 64K times four of L1 cache, uh, four times uh, 512K of uh, level two cache, and two megabytes of L3 cache, uh, you know, all kinds of things and stuff, 2.6 uh, gigahertz. And then uh, comparatively to the Q6600, at least according to this uh, CPU World um, article, uh, the, the Core 2 Quad runs faster, uses a but like half the power, and maybe not half the power, but a lot less power. And they were just saying that maybe there's an insignificant uh, multi-core, um, you know, gain uh, using the CPU. I don't see why it would. Maybe at the stock values or something like that. But uh, yeah, drawbacks performs a little worse in all types of applications. Requires somewhat more power. So AMD power hungry, you know, still going on back then. And uh, yeah, so, boof. Here's its gaming or uh, synthetic gaming performance in Fire Strike. Okay, this is using an RX 580 8 gigabyte, overclocked a bit. Uh, 14455, which is not far off from a modern platform's graphics score, but look at that physics score and look at the overall score. 8000 versus on a Ryzen 2700X. 13090 with a physics score of almost, well, yeah, 50, more than 15,000 more. So we've come a long way, AMD, since the OG Phenom and its quad-core nature. Even the Phenom 2 is definitely still a viable platform, and I'd like to look at this versus that eventually. And uh, I've got a six-core Phenom as well. But, uh, yeah, moving on uh, to the gaming benchmarks, I bring up this uh, Steam forum because I was trying to run Far Cry 5, and on, on modern AAA titles, you're going to run into this where there are some games out there that just straight up miss microcode or uh, instruction sets that, uh, that this thing doesn't have. So you can't run the Far Cry 5 on a Phenom processor, apparently not even a Phenom 2 or a Phenom, whatever, because it's missing the SSE 4.1 uh, instruction set and it only has a 4.0 or 4A or 4B or something. So... This platform is so bad it doesn't even run some games because it's missing little instructions inside of it to complete these actions. And why would game companies worry about phenoms, you know, uh, you know, and, and working around those limitations? Yeah. So I've done up some benchmarks, of course. Uh, you know, not as many games as I did. Try to keep them to low end games, and it starts off not so bad and quickly becomes a cluster. Uh, but yeah, cue those benchmarks to me, Joe. When we come back, uh, we'll just finish her up. We'll make her happen. Woo!
<laughs> Watch out, it's a freaking Wolverine claw or something. Not very good, right? A little disappointing. <laughs> I guess with the sub 300 score in Cinebench, what could you be, you know, whatever. And if games, uh, you know, don't properly utilize the single core, th for, well, not that this thing has very good single threaded performance anyways, it just kind of took a dive real quick. Uh, games like Project Cars 2, uh, you know, that run on a potato, well, I guess they don't run on a potato because this is the definition of a potato. Uh, it was like really hard to get it to run in stable frame rates at all. Uh, first time doing For Honor as well, and uh, I was actually kind of impressed with it was able to run Ultra and For Honor and had pretty decent frame rates, but she toppled down pretty quickly, and I wouldn't play any competitive online games with this. Uh, Battlefield 1 was a, you know, a hard mess, and then, you know, you might want to use, like, they actually didn't run uh, uh, Rainbow Six Siege that bad, that's an online game, but I didn't run it with uh, online, uh, but I did run Counter-Strike, which is a game that should run on anything, and I had to turn down the graphic quality settings to get it to run any sort of good, and, uh, yeah, I was jumping around, and the, you know, minimum frames were just so low that I wouldn't recommend this for anything. You know, maybe you could build, you know, if you come across one of these cheap, build a system for your mom to check emails on. Build a system for your grandpa to look at porn on. I don't know, but gaming, this thing's got a dosed. Maybe you could use it as like a media center, you know, or run some emulators on it. I'm sure it would do that not so bad, but uh, unless you're gaming on retro games of the time, uh, which, and there's much better ways to do that, I just, this platform is dead. It's, it's pretty bad. But we will look at its brother, the Phenom, Phenom 2 Quad Core, uh, which I believe will do much, much better in the coming weeks, as well as I have a 6 core Phenom that I want to check out as well. But this first iteration, Black Edition, overclocked as far as it'll go. <sighs> I'm sorry to say, guys, if you're still gaming on this, I feel really bad for you. I'm at watch Jimmy join Instagram and Twitter. I've got shirts. There's uh, lots of shirts. There's the... Uh, Internet is a series of tubes, the Timmy Joe shirts, as well as stuff staring at my dual GPUs. And we'll be looking at this soon as well. Shh. Anyways, also want to thank the sponsor, SADKeys.com. They got a crazy Black Friday sale. You get good quick, uh, stuff on there. Uh, I, I use the service all the time. Never really let me down. So that's why I'm letting them sponsor the, the couple of videos or whatever. But uh, I'm at Watch Jimmy Joe Instagram and Twitter. Check out this. And then, you know, Patreon. Uh, you, you know, I'm doing behind the scenes updates on Patreon. So if you can spare coffee money, like two, three dollars, whatever, uh, a month to help me make videos, there's like over 45 of you now. It's actually been pretty good lately for view counts and the support on the channel. I just want to thank every single one of my Patreon guys, just everyone that gives positive comments to the channel and the mad views and stuff like that. It's, uh, it's really making this fun for me. And I thank you very much. 70,000 subscribers, whatever. So I'm at Watch Jimmy Joe Instagram and Twitter. We'll look at other phenoms later, but this guy, ah, man, dig the hole, erect the tombstone. I believe she's dead. I'll see you guys in another video.